Two of America's Most Wanted. How did that video come about? So it was, it was, it was Tupac's concept, right? But I got to set it up. I got to do all the behind the camera stuff. The table with the pig was my idea. The Last Supper, that was all my idea. But it was, it was awesome. Again, that was a three day shoot. We shot two days of it and we got so much content. Puck, Puck and Snoop, they just bounced. They jumped in his roles and they're like, yo, we're out. I'm like, what are you doing? We have another day of filming. They're like, no, nah, you got a video. And that was it. That's how, that's how that went. But it was magical. I mean, look, I had uh, uh, a good friend of mine, Dave Daniels, shot that. So it has that filmic, stylized look to it. And it was, it was just, it was so much fun. I remember <clears throat> when, they're, when they're doing the chorus, we, I, I had a dolly shot that was going in and out this little alcove that they were sitting they were throwing money. It was it was Snoop and Pac, Pac and Snoop. And it was the, you know, ain't nothing but a gangster party. They were doing the hook or the bridge or whatever. And then when we were done with that, I remember I stopped the camera. I went up to them and I was like, you motherfuckers are multi-million dollar motherfuckers. That shit was bananas. It was just, it was, it was magical. I, I was, I was, I was over the fucking moon, dude. I knew what we were getting in the can. We were shooting film back then, too, 35 millimeter. So I knew how much magic was coming into the can on that video. That video, I think, became one of MTV's most rotated videos, too, ever. And that was Pac's idea for the fake Biggie and Puffy, right? Yes, 100%. 100%. Was Snoop cool with Pac doing that? Well, Snoop was on set... Uh, I don't know that he saw the Biggie and and Puffy thing being filmed, um, so I didn't really. And honestly, I didn't. I didn't put two and two together with how much fuel that is for the East Coast West Coast fire. That I mean, look, I th I, I think I think honestly, I think the labels and the media turned it into an East Coast West Coast thing to begin with. Because it sold more albums, I think. That's, but that's my opinion. You know, I just think Pac had. <clears throat> Pac was a loyal motherfucker, right? Pac demanded loyalty, and he was loyal. So, the sense that I got was that some people were disloyal to him, and and this was how he got to vent himself. If it couldn't face them face to face, or if they weren't willing to do that, this was one of the ways that he would do it. As as was hit him up. From your point of view, right? How's the relationship between Pac and Snoop? I mean, look, they uh, they were tight. They were tight on set. There's all kinds of behind the scenes footage of Two America's Most Wanted where you see Snoop listening to what Pac's saying about the video and what we're shooting and how we're doing it. So they seem tight to me. They seem tight to me. I mean, I know I've heard the stories of what happened on the plane ride back from New York and how Snoop was, you know, lying covered up with a knife in his hand and all of that. Snoop to me is an evolved man. And he got to evolve in a way that Tupac never can, right? Because one of the last things Pac said was, in six months, no one's going to recognize me because I'm going to be done with all this dumb shit. In fact, I might run for mayor of Los Angeles one day because these, these politicians and police are the biggest gangs in this country. So I think... I, so, so there's two people that stand out for me that I think people judge badly based on what was going on when Pac was alive. One's Snoop and the other's Alan Hughes, right? I, I had the pleasure of seeing Snoop for the first time on a FaceTime at Matt Barnes's house when I had some projects on one of Snoop's involvement in. It's, he put the he put the FaceTime and all of a sudden Snoop after 26. Look, I've worked with Snoop. I did a spoof of Drop It Like It's Hot for Hot Pockets with Snoop that was a 
fucking huge billion eyeball video for Hot Pockets and Nestle. And I'd done a few other videos for Snoop and even a badass video that Snoop had shown up at, right? But Snoop, I don't think in any of those situations have realized I was Gobi from Two America's Most Wanted and, and Pac, right? Because as soon as he saw me at Matt Barnes's house, he looked at me and goes, is that Gobi? You old ass motherfucker, right? He saw me and he said, you old ass motherfucker. And he said, let me tell you one thing. Pac only had a few people that were loyal to him. You were one of them. Why don't you come here? Let me see these projects you got to do. Let me help you with them. That was the first time in 26 years that anyone had said something so fucking dope to me. So I think the Pac fans make a huge mistake of judging people that were around Tupac when he was alive in the same way the, what they went through, right? So whatever Snoop went through or whatever Alan Hughes went through in that fight, these are people that are 25, 27 years older. Every Everything that I've ever seen of Snoop in the last five, eight years has been an evolved Snoop. He's a businessman. He's a grandfather. He's a role model. He has football teams that he supports he does give back he has a sense of responsibility and i still to this day think he's got <clears throat> unconditional love for tupac and the experience tupac helped him with because snoop will say Pac gave him relationships advice and helped him in different ways right his work ethic or whatever so when people judge snoop i think they do Tupac at the service. When people judge Alan Hughes, they do Tupac at the service. Because that Dear Mama Doc series that I worked on, by the way, and was in episode four, if you don't close your eyes, was a piece of mastery. The shit's up for a fucking Grammy Award, right? The most viewed, unscripted, episodic ever on Hulu and FX. Alan Hughes did that. Alan Hughes did Tupac's legacy more than most in the last 27 years. So don't judge people based on what they went through or what you think they went through. Judge them based on their deeds and the footsteps that they're taking today. So I think for, for that, for two people, Alan Hughes and Snoop, I think the 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 Tupac fans need to give them a lot more love. You can go be some love too. I'll take some fucking love. I've gotten roasted by the Pac fans over the years, but that's another story. Right, right. Yeah, man, that's real talk, man. And hit them up. You shot hit them up, right? How was it like shooting that video? So I was I was producing with Tracy. Hit him up. Uh, uh, Kevin Swain directed it. Uh, and I think it was Maddie Lebatik who was a DP on it. I mean, there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of drama on Hit 'Em Up. It was pretty smooth sailing, other than how gnarly the song was, and you know the just <laughs> the video, video was cool. There was nothing, nothing dramatic about it. How do you want it? Uh, uh, yeah. How do you want it was dope because. You know, Pac wanted to do a video with, he, you know, he was interesting. It, you know, if he wanted a video to be more sensitive or stylized, he asked for a female director. If he wanted to do something that has sexuality, he wanted a porn director to do it, right? Ron Hightower was the porn director that we had for How Do You Want It? And he had hired uh, a bunch of strippers and porn stars, Heather... Heather Hunter, I think it was, and uh, a few others back in the day. But what was interesting on that one was girls were half naked on the set most of the time, right? And at one point, Pac stopped the production and he made all the men take their tops off. So, you know, all the men were in solidarity with the naked women. He's like, I think you motherfuckers need to take your clothes off. 
So all the men on set had to take their tops off just to give the women a little more comfort with being naked in front of us. But that was a, a funny how do you want it story. Yeah, I heard with how do you want it. Um, I think a few people told a story about that where after that they had like a party afterwards where they was like, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. So I was at that party. So I was there, uh, Tracy and I were dating, right? And it was at a, it was at a, um, uh, the after party, how do you want it? Was at a hotel suite. So it was Ron Hightower, Tupac. And then all the girls that were in the video and Pac was playing all these new songs that he had just done. So it was like a listening party and a party. He, he was over the moon. He was so happy. So we're blazing. Me and Tracy are dancing in the corner. We're smoking a joint, drinking some Cristal and Alizé. Everyone's partying. Then we turn around. All the girls are naked in the middle. Pac's naked on one side. Ron Hightower's naked on the other. And they're about to go to town. So Tracy grabbed my hand and we exited the room. And that was, that was the last I saw of it. 